The shocking truth behind the fall of the Italian Mafia. During the 1900s, the Italian Mafia reigned supreme. From extortion to prostitution and even loan sharking, the Mafia ran the streets of New York City. They made hundreds of millions every month, and it took decades of investigation just to make a case. And yet, their downfall can be explained with just three things. Wiretaps, photos, and the infamous RICO Act. Watch until the end to uncover the shocking truth behind the fall of the Italian Mafia, only on Crime Cartel. How did the Mafia make money? It took the feds years to deduce how the Italian mob had such an influence on people, and better yet, to understand how they carry out their operations. The truth is, the Italian mob partly got their money from the rich, and they used their influence of various unions to get what they want. The mob had a hierarchical model of power, and the lower levels had strong control over the worker unions, the construction union, gas station staff, garbage union, and so many more labor unions were pawns of the mob's control. If the construction company did not comply with the demands of the crime family or paid the ransom, the labor union would go on strike, shutting down the project completely. So the company would rather give the ransom than halt the project completely and lose money. From each such project, the family would make millions of dollars, and there were hundreds of construction projects in New York during that time. Although the mob had great influence in the labor market, they weren't exactly perceived as heroes. They extorted restaurants and small businesses for protection. However, the potential threats and harm often originated from themselves if they did not comply. The Commission. There were five major crime families in New York that ran the state. Gambino, Lucchese, Genovese, Bonanno, and the Colombo family. But unlike what you might expect, they were highly organized, and despite being different, these families complied with one another. Now, I'm not saying that things were all sunshine and rainbows. They did have their differences. But at the end of the day, the families respected the commission, and all the differences, they were discussed in the commission. You could see the commission as the secret meeting of the bosses from the said crime families, where they would discuss crimes, plan the next steps, and conduct their business. Charlie Lucky Luciano from the Genovese family was the head of the commission, and he was the one who came up with the idea as well. The beginning of the end, the RICO Act. The crime families were set up in a model so that the higher-ups were never prosecuted. You see, there was the boss, then the underboss, the soldiers, and then the associates in a crime family. And no matter what, the boss and the underboss never got their names dirty. But to get rid of the crime, the feds needed to get to the bosses. Earlier, it was impossible because the mafia bosses had found the perfect loophole, but it all changed after the introduction of RICO. For those who don't know, RICO stands for Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations, and it is known as the force that took out the Mafia. It was an act introduced in 1970 that allows authorities to investigate the whole organization as an entity instead of individual criminals. So if a low-level thug is prosecuted, you could bring down the whole family, and that's exactly what the FBI needed. Now, with the power of RICO in their hands, the feds started to make their case, but it is still quite hard. They need to find a crime committed by the mob and then link it to one of the bosses within the family. And they needed to get all five families at once because if anyone got even a whiff of the crime even once, the whole thing could blow up. The snake in the family, Gambino family. The first suspect on the FBI's watch list was Angelo Ruggiero, known as Quack Quack on the street. He was a friend of John Gotti and a major drug dealer. Dealing drugs was banned by the boss of the Gambino family, but Angelo carried it out anyway. Due to the drugs, the feds were already investigating him, so it was not hard for the authorities to get the court allowance to tap him. They messed with his telephone line and the serviceman inserted a tap wire. As the feds expected, there were a bunch of conversations recorded on the wire about illegal activities and drug trafficking, so Angelo Regaria was surely going down. And to make matters sweeter, he was often spotted meeting with Paul Castellano, the boss of the Gambino family. This was enough for the FBI to get the court's approval to investigate and wiretap Paul. Things finally started to move in the FBI's direction. Due to the bug installed in Castellano's TV, more than 600 hours of him talking about illegal activities were recorded. The Monopoly, Lucchese family. 
Salvatore Avellino became the reason for the rise of the Lucchese family in the sanitation industry. He was a soldier-level member of the Lucchese family. He managed the million-dollar garbage front of the family. The Mafia had essentially set up a monopoly in the industry of garbage collection. And since there was no competition, they asked for whatever price wanted from the customers. Obviously, the business owner had no other option but to pay whatever was asked. And this brought millions of dollars to the family. The authorities got permission to wiretap Sal, and a bug was installed in his car. During the investigation, he was seen driving with Tony Ducks, the boss of the Lucchese family. Thanks to the bug, hard evidence was formed to take out the Lucchese family as well. Two families down, three more to go. Right now, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Would you like to join our crime cartel family? It is a deal that you won't get anywhere else. You get the best crime documentaries out there, and in return, all you need to do is like this video and subscribe to Crime Cartel. The Supreme Power, Genovese Family. This was the biggest crime family in the USA during the 1980s, which was led by Fat Tony. It was during the investigation of Tony Ducks from the Lucchese family that the feds found out that Fat Tony had frequent meetings with other families of the Mafia. It was strange for the authorities at first, since the idea of these families working together was unexpected. But the facts spoke for themselves. Palma Boy's Social Club was the meeting spot, which was quickly bugged by the authorities and many recordings against crime families were successfully recorded. All thanks to Tony Ducks. Now, the authorities had more knowledge than ever. They got to know that the families do indeed work together and that there is a supreme power in the Mafia families. The goal to eradicate the bosses seemed closer. The facts became clearer and the truth harder to refute. The Underdog, Colombo Family. Remember when I told you about the control of the Mafia over the construction union? It was all thanks to Ralph Scapo, who was a soldier-level member of the Colombo crime family. He had an extreme command over the labor union, after all. He was the president of the District Council of Cement and Concrete Workers Union. Due to his vital role in controlling the union, Ralph, like an underdog, earned himself a seat at the table of the commission. And since a soldier was sitting with the bosses, the FBI zoomed into him for further information. The Rule of Successor, Bonanno Family. In order to take over the mob family, you need to eliminate the current boss of the family. And in order to do that, you need to have the blessings of the other mafia families. That's right, the other bosses should allow you to dispose of the current boss. Spoiler alert, that's what happened in the case of the Bonanno family. You see, the boss of the Bonanno family, the Cigar Carmine Galanti, was out for lunch when he was shot. Ironically, he had a cigar in his mouth when he died, justifying his nickname. The getaway car was found by the police, but no evidence could be found. However, within an hour of the murder, the underboss of the Bonanno family, Anthony Wack Wack Indelicato, was seen celebrating with the Genovese family. Considering the rule of the successor, it became clear that Anthony murdered Galanti to take over the Bonanno family. This gave the authorities all the rights to make a case of Indelicato as well. And with that, they had solid proof again, proof of all five crime families in New York. Now it was time to prepare for war. The Photos now that the authorities had everything they needed, they wanted the final nail in the coffin, something to prove their theory of the commission to the authorities. And they got just that. The FBI started to push their informants for any detail about the secret meeting of the family bosses. And on the 15th of May, 1984, they were successful, as if years of hard work were about to pay off. After a meeting of the commission, the mafia bosses were leaving, and the FBI was able to photograph all of them one by one. It was everything they needed to get rid of the bosses, and all of them were eventually arrested. End before the end. Paul Castellano from the Gambino family had a rule. If you deal drugs, you're dead. And it makes sense because drugs were the reason why John got on the FBI's radar in the first place. Since Angelo's secret side hustle was no longer a secret, his life was in danger. And guess what he did to escape his death? He killed Paul Castellano as soon as he got out with a $2 million bail. The Fall. With all the evidence, the wiretaps, the photos, and victims of the four Mafia bosses, the case went to trial, and with a unanimous vote of all 12 jurors, the bosses were found guilty. They were sentenced to 100 years in prison and millions of dollars in fines. Their grip over New York City faded, and over the years, hundreds of soldiers and associates were arrested, leading to the fall of the Italian Mafia. Subscribe to Crime Cartel for the best crime-related videos. Don't miss out. Click that subscribe button. Or else... Well, 
You don't want to find out. Just kidding, of course. But consider subscribing for more interesting and entertaining crime videos. If you wish to learn more about the rise of the Italian Mafia in New York, click the recommended video right now and we're hoping to see you there. Ciao!